Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured. But the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. In his work, The Poetics, Aristotle is going to discuss three closely related aspects of tragedies as he understands them, the way that they ought to be. And we typically call these reversal, recognition, and suffering. And these are three important aspects that apply to the most important dimension or aspect or part of tragedy as a whole, and that's what he calls plot or muthos, literally story. So how is the story being developed? And he, he begins this discussion uh, by telling us that there's two different kinds of plots. There's simple plots and complex plots. And simple plots don't really make for good tragedies. Why? Because they actually lack the structures, the uh, aspects, the, the effects as well of reversal and recognition. So they don't achieve what they're supposed to. He says, I call simple an action which is continuous um, in the sense defined and unitary, but whose transformation, the, the metabasis, the change that's occurring, lacks reversal and recognition. Complex is one whose transformation contains recognition or reversal or both of these. And we're going to talk a bit about you know, how this should take place. He also talks about the possibility uh, later on of, of mutual recognition, recognition uh, at the same time, and of uh, reversal and recognition being connected together within the plot. So simple plots lack this and suffer because of it, and complex plots have this. So we'll, we'll look at what these are in just a moment, but there is something I wanted to bring up from considerably later in the book when he's talking about four types of tragedy. And, and types here is actually translating a day. So he's, he's serious about this. These are, this is a division. And then he goes on and he says, there's the complex whose essence is reversal and recognition, right? The, the uh, whole of it lies in this. And then there's the kind rich in suffering, hey de pathetike. Uh, and he uses, for example, that the Ajax, which we still possess, and the Ixion. And then he talks about the character based, and then the fourth being uh, the simple. And he says, ideally, you should strive to have all of these. Um, failing that, the best and the most, especially in view of current censure of the poets, meaning that people are criticizing the poets in, in his own time. And so he thinks that the best kind of tragedy is going to have reversal and recognition. This will be absolutely central to it. But it's also going to be rich in suffering. It's going to be pathetic. And it'll have good characters as well. And there will be an overall unity to it. So that said, what are these important aspects? <clears throat> so he's going to actually provide us with definitions or characterizations of each one of these. So let's start with reversal, which is peripeteia something shifting, as he says, it's a change. So it's a metabole. This is a term that he's using over and over here. And that's also translated as transformation. This is central. In, in a plot, 
things change. You don't just simply have repeating, 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 because that's not a story. A story has to have things being different, becoming different in it. So a change to the opposite, and here you know we've got opposite direction. Literally, it's just ace to enantion into the opposite or the you know uh, the contrary, right? Of events, um, and this is interesting because he, the the term here in Greek is not ton pragmaton, which we would expect if it is events, but rather the things that are actually done, to prachomenon, right? Coming from uh, prachain, the verb. So the, these are closely connected because pragmata and uh, praxis and, and prachain are all you know, the same root. So these are the things that the people in the plot are doing. So a change to the opposite of events. And he'll give you some examples, but we'll come back to that in a moment. Let's talk about recognition. It says recognition, as the very name indicates, is also a change, metabole, from ignorance, not knowing something, to uh, knowledge of that thing. Right? And this happens quite a lot in these plays. Ex agnoias es gnosin. Right? So uh, this is, is quite important. But then he adds two other interesting qualifiers to this. So it's not just any sort of learning something. Um, recognition isn't, say, finding out that you live in a certain postal zip code. And isn't that interesting? Because now I can send a letter. It's got to have more going on there. So the, uh, the change uh, from ignorance to knowledge leads to an affective relational response. It leads to friendship, philia, right? Or to enmity, or we could say hatred, extra, right? So it's, it's leading the characters into taking positions in relation to each other. Right? And then there's a third part, bearing on things that have to do with prosperity or adversity. So that is ton pros eutuchian. So eutuchian, things going well for you, but there's an element of chance there, right? A doustuchian, dous is the opposite of eu in Greek, meaning bad, so bad fortune, bad luck. And he actually uses the term Horis menon there. So it's not just in relation to, but defined by or restricted to. So that's what recognition is. And then he's going you know, to talk about both of those quite a bit. And then uh, towards the end of this discussion, he says, um, these are two components of the plot, reversal and recognition. A third is suffering. And the term that he's using there is just pathos which means emotion or suffering or you know something like a strong desire and in the the framework of greek tragedy what does this actually mean he tells us that it is destructive or painful action praxis there so somebody is doing something to somebody or fate is doing something to somebody and it is destructive Fartike, right? Meaning um, corrupting, damaging, or uh, ude, ude nera, uh, painful. And he gives you some examples of these public deaths, uh, deaths that take place in public, literally uh, apparent deaths, fanero, right? Or uh, physical agony, or wounding. Or other such things, he says, hosa toy alta. So that gives you an idea about what the suffering aspect is. Uh, let's come back to the reversal. So, what are examples of reversals? What happens in them? So he says, um, for example, in the Oedipus, the person who comes to bring Oedipus happiness and intends to rid him of his fear about his mother, he affects the opposite by revealing. Oedipus's true identity, right? 
In the Linkius, the one figure is let off to die. Danaus follows with the intention of killing him, yet the upshot of events is Danaus' death and the other's survival. So we have some sort of thing happening contrary to our own expectation. Now, if we actually knew all the the matters behind the play, then it wouldn't be that much of a surprise to us. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. Uh, So that's reversal. What about recognition? So we've got this important change that's taking place. And he says that the finest recognition is one that actually occurs simultaneously with reversal. For example, in the Oedipus, right? But there's other kinds as well. Um, it could be in relation to in, inanimate and even chance things. It's also possible to recognize someone has or has not committed a deed. But the one that is most relevant to the plot and action is the one described. A joint recognition and reversal will yield either pity or fear, which is part of what tragedy is about. And then he says it's recognition between people. Some cases involve only the relation of one party to the other when the other's identity is clear. So you're a guard and you know you belong to the city, everybody knows who you are, and somebody comes to the door and you think they're an enemy, but they're actually the long lost prince of the city or something like that, right? And suddenly you recognize, oh my gosh, that's who it is, right? That's recognition. And that happens with the characters. But it happens with us, too, the audience or the readers of it. He says, in others, there's need for double recognition. For example, Iphigenia is recognized by Orestes through the sending of the letter, but for Iphigenia to recognize his relation to herself required a further recognition. And Aristotle will actually go on uh, and, and talk about different sorts and effects of recognition in a bit more detail there. But that's probably enough for talking about all three of these and how they work together. Now, there is one other massively important aspect of this stress that he places on the plot and the importance of these three elements, uh, reversal, recognition, and suffering. Now, it doesn't apply quite so much to the suffering explicitly, but perhaps implicitly, we should read that in. At the very beginning of this discussion, we've seen that he says that these elements, recognition or reversal, should emerge from what he calls the structure of the plot uh, taste sustaseos to mutho. So a plot already is a structure anyway, right? It's a synthesis. Um, it's a bringing things together. Now we're looking at the very structure of the plot. How is it held together? Aristotle is a big critic of things that don't really make sense and are just th- you know, thrown together in episodic manners that haven't been adequately thought through by the producer, the poet. He tells us that what we want here is that these elements should emerge from it so that they occur or develop, they come into being from preceding events, right? And there's an important way he he talks about this. Uh, Either from necessity, ex ananke. So so necessity means like if this happens, well, then this has to happen too. And this did happen, so now this is going to occur. Or he doesn't say out of probability, but in accordance with probability. And the Greek for that is using a different term Right? Kata to echos. To echos is probability, what is likely, what is believable, what makes sense in the circumstances. And he's going to tell us, you know, things about this uh, later on. Um, you know, when it comes to the different kinds of tragedy, things need to make sense with each other, as we saw. Uh, he also talks about um, when you're writing a tragedy, 
Uh, you're aiming for what you want by means of the awe-inspiring, this is tragic and arouses fellow feeling, and he says, uh, this can happen when a clever but wicked person is deceived or a brave or unjust person is worsted. Why? These things are probable, as Agathon puts it, and here he says something really quite interesting. They are probable because uh, it's probable many things should infringe or go against probability. So the the probable is not just like a big list of the things that we consider probable with a bunch of percentages. Sometimes weird events are going to happen. That's part of the realm of probability. But it's got to make sense. It's got to be connected with the things that happened before, not just chance, as Aristotle says, or pure luck or things happening in a certain way. Although he does actually at one point tell us that uh, we can have chance events that seem as if they were fated, you know, like a statue falling on somebody, killing them when that statue is somehow connected with that person. It's a random event, but it doesn't appear to be completely random to us. So these elements, uh, reversal, recognition, if you want them to really work, you can't just throw them in there willy-nilly. They've got to fit the plot, you know? There has to be a structure, a situating of them. And we could even say that suffering perhaps needs to make some sense in order for us to respond to it emotionally in the way that Aristotle talks about, namely uh, in terms of fear and pity, but also in terms of feeling a sense of awe and uh, fellow feeling, philanthropia, which are all different uh, passions that he talks about. So these three aspects, very, very important to the plot. If you want to have a successful tragedy, you need to incorporate and attend to these thoughtfully.